Okay, logistic regression is when what you use when the response variable is a dichotomous response, a response with only two choices, like yes, no, A, B, up, down, true, false, etc. In this case, we use logistic regression to model the outcome. Dichotomous responses are categorical. Dichotomous responses can be re-expressed in terms of the responses 0 and 1 to make them quantitative instead of categorical. Using this re-expression, samples of dichotomous response data can be analyzed. Before we go on, it's important to define something called the odds of success. Let the odds of success be defined as the success probability of whatever outcome you're interested in divided by the failure probability. That is, theta equals p over 1 minus p. Now lots of times people say in layman's terms, what are the odds that that would happen? And you might think of that in terms of a percent chance. But in statistics, odds are different from the probability. They're related to it through this formula, but they are different. So the odds are the probability of a success over the probability of a failure. And if the probability of a success is p, then the probability of a failure is 1 minus p. Notice that the odds can go from 0 to infinity, while probabilities only go from 0 to 1. So let's take a look at some probabilities and their related odds. So let's start at an easy one. Probability of 0.5. So if the probability is 0.5, then the odds are 0.5 over 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5 over 0.5, which is 1. So a probability of a half leads to an odds of 1. You can figure out the rest of the odds from this table by doing that same calculation on your own, but you'll see that if the probability is really, really tiny, the odds are really, really tiny. At a probability of a half, the odds are 1, and as the probabilities get bigger, the odds grow much, much bigger. All right, so it's important to understand what odds are because we're going to use them in logistic regression. In a study of esophageal cancer, scientists collected data on the size of the tumor in centimeters and whether or not it had spread, which is called metastasis, to the lymph nodes of, for 31 patients with esophageal cancer. The data are displayed in the plot to the right. A 1 means yes, it metastasized, and a no means, a 0 means no, it did not uh, metastasize. So notice that it does look like there's a little bit of a relationship. Smaller tumor sizes are associated with more zeros for not metastasizing, and larger tumor sizes seem to be associated with um, more metastases. So that's the pattern that we see in the data. So the larger tumor sizes appear to metastasize more often. All right, so can we use simple linear regression to model this data? Does fitting a straight line do a good job of modeling the relationship? This straight line does not fit. So I fit a simple linear regression. Clearly, it's not a good way to predict tumor metastasis. Furthermore, what is the response variable here? What's a 0.5 tumor metastasis mean? That's not interpretable. So another idea is to split tumor size into categories like small, medium, and large and do chi-squared tests using a contingency table for tumor size category versus metastasis. But notice we would lose valuable information. Our data has a much more refined predictor, tumor size as a continuous random variable to predict from. So logistic regression is the trick that we want here. Logistic regression is going to predict our binary outcome, success equals 1, failure equals 0, from a continuous predictor with a sigmoidal, otherwise known as an S-shaped curve. So we want to predict the probability of tumor metastasis, or the odds, but let's start with a model that we know, beta naught plus beta 1x. Recall that it predicts y, but this has no interpretable meaning. What is a half of a tumor metastasis? Tumor metastasis is a binary outcome. So what we're going to do is we're going to predict the log odds of success in the following way. So instead of just a plain y on the left, we're going we're gonna to predict the log of the odds of success. Now there's a reason for that that's beyond the scope of this course, but that's 
the way that we're going to do it. Because when we solve, we get that sigmoidal curve, and we're going to demonstrate how you should interpret that in a minute when we look at the output. But for now, we're going to talk about the log odds of success equaling beta naught plus beta 1x. Note that the estimation of the parameters in this model is not the same as it is for simple linear regression. The specifics of this method are beyond the scope of this course, um, but we're still going to learn to read the output. Now, we're going to want to put things back on the regular old odds scale rather than log odds for interpretation purposes. Um, odds are hard enough to deal with. We don't need to deal with log odds too. So the way that we do that is to exponentiate both sides of the log odds equation. Now, here's something that's going to seem a little weird for those of you who haven't had a higher level statistics course yet. In statistics, we frequently use the term LOG to really mean the natural log. And that's the way it is in R too. LOG means natural log and there's another function for a log base 10. So when we write log here, get used to thinking of it as the natural log. I had a hard time with that when I started in statistics, but I've grown kind of used to it now. All right, so we had our natural log of P over one minus P equaling beta naught plus beta one X. And all we've done to that equation is just take E and raise both of those sides of that equation with base E. So that's the only thing that we've done so far because we're trying to undo this odds here. And if we do E to that, it gets rid of the odds. And so we're left with just the odds on the left and E raised to the beta naught plus beta one X power on the right. Makes sense. But now, instead of putting this equation in terms of the odds, let's go one step further and see if we can solve for the probability and put it in terms of a probability. So we're gonna work through this. To make things a little simpler, I'm gonna just substitute y equals e to the beta naught plus beta one x for just a second so I don't have to keep writing e to the beta naught plus beta one x. And so this means that p of x over one minus p of x equals y. Because remember in the beginning, p of x over one minus p x equaled e to the beta naught plus beta one x. All right, so now we can solve p of x over one minus p of x equals y. We can solve for p by taking both sides times that denominator, one minus p of x. And the next step we could do is to distribute the y on the right side. So p of x equals y minus y times prob the probability of success. And now, what do we want to get together? We want to get our, um, we want to solve in terms of p. And so we're just going to move that negative y times p of x to the left side, add it to both sides so it shows up on the left and goes away on the right. And then we're going to factor out the p on the left, so we have p times 1 plus y. And then we divide both sides by 1 plus y. So that's just a little demonstration that we can um, write these things in terms of the probability instead of in terms of the odds. And substituting the e to the beta naught plus beta 1x back in for y, we have the following formula. We have this formula right here. And so now we've got a formula that we can plug in. If we can estimate these coefficients, the beta naught and beta one, we can plug it into this formula and get an estimate of the probability of metastasis. All right, so that was a little bit of a calculation. Hold on with me for one more minute and let's do one more calculation. Let's simplify the odds at x plus one relative to the odds at x. So remember I'm using this theta to denote odds. So the odds at x plus one over the odds at x. So it's the odds of metastasis at the next x relative to the odds of the previous x. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So first, let's put in what the odds at x plus one are in the numerator. And that's e to the beta naught plus beta one of x, which is x plus one. And in the denominator, we just have the regular old odds of x, e to the beta naught plus beta one x. And if we do a little bit of algebra, we distribute the um, beta one 
to both of these terms right here. And that's how we got this change in the next step. And then we can just use our rules of exponents to separate out these two e to the to things plus each other is e to the to the exponent times e to another exponent. So we just separated that out. And then we see that our e to the beta naught plus beta 1x cancels, and we're simply left with e to the beta 1. Okay, whew. So now we've worked through several equations. So we've got four equations that we want you guys to keep a handle of. The first one says that the log odds are beta naught plus beta 1x. That's the top equation. The second one says if I don't want to talk about it in terms of log odds, I can just talk about it in terms of the odds, and that is e to the beta naught plus beta 1x. The third one says I can take it one step further, and instead of talking about it in terms of the odds, I can talk about it in terms of the probability of a success. And that's the formula that we derived, e to the beta naught plus beta 1x over 1 plus e to the beta naught plus beta 1x. But another way that we can write that is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative beta naught plus beta 1x. That's just dividing the top and bottom over here by e to the beta naught plus beta 1x. It gives you 1 in the numerator, it gives you a 1 in the denominator here, and then it gives you 1 over e to the, neg e to the beta naught plus beta 1x here, which is a negative exponent. So anyway. You don't need to derive any of that. Um, just know that both of these formulas are candidates for being able to calculate that probability. Those are both equivalent. And last but not least, if you take e to the beta 1 power, then you have the way that the odds change at the next x relative to the current x. All right, so what are we going to do with all this? And don't forget that the log is the natural log for us. All right, so what are we going to do with this? We ran a logistic regression using our um, metastasis data set that we introduced with. And you can see that our kind of S-shaped curve, it's a little bit flat, but you can see that it has sort of an S-shape on our graph. I went ahead and plotted it on the graph. is pictured over there. And we have our beta naught, an uh, estimate of beta naught, which is B naught. That's the intercept. We're used to seeing this kind of output, so this should look very familiar. And we've got our B1. All right. So how can we estimate the probability of tumor metastasis? Well, remember, we have those two formulas, either e to the beta naught plus beta 1x over 1 plus e to the beta naught plus beta 1x, or we could write that as 1 over 1 plus e to the negative b naught plus b1x, right? We've got those two formulas. So, and those are the probability of tumor metastasis, which is what our S-shaped curve is on our picture. Okay. Now, let's use this output to estimate the probability of metastasis at a tumor size of 7 centimeters. So how do we estimate probabilities? Well, that was the two formulas that we just looked at on the previous slide. All right, so the probability of tumor metastasis at 7 centimeters is to just go ahead and put in our B0, which is 2.0858 in everywhere in the B0 in the formula, and our 0.5117 in for our B1, and then the X that we want to estimate it at, the tumor size that we want to estimate it at, is a 7. And when you plug that into one of the versions of our formula, you get 0.817. And this makes sense from looking at the picture, right? 7 would be about right here. If you go straight up, you're about right here. And it looks like we're around the 0.8 mark. So if your tumor is 7 centimeters in size, there's an 82% chance of metastasis to the lymph nodes. All right, so we've estimated a probability. Okay, so now we want to estimate and interpret how the odds of metastasis change with tumor size. So remember that was our last formula that we derived in our box set of formulas. That was e to the beta 1. 
And so for our sample, we'll use e to the b1. So e to the b1 is e to the 0.5117, and that gives us 1.67. So how do we interpret this? Well, that means the odds of metastasis to the lymph nodes at the next tumor size are 1.67 times the odds at the previous tumor size. So with each one centimeter increase in tumor size, the odds of metastasis are 1.67 times the odds previously. Notice that this is a ratio. Remember, it was, it was a ratio of odds. So instead of just saying you're adding something, you're actually talking about how many times larger or what fraction smaller. Okay, so that one might take a little bit of practice, but that's the way you interpret that. All right, so we've gone over logistic regression with one predictor, but it can be generalized to more than one predictor. I'm sure you can imagine. So then we just model it with extra beta coefficients and terms in our model. And we use the same software to estimate it, and then we just simply have to remember to make interpretations after accounting for the other variables in the model.